We're going for the headshot in this episode of The Gear Guide. So when players first jump into the airsoft world, a lot of times they're drawn to the sniper rifle. And then you realize you kind of get outgunned, but usually we all come back around at some point in the career to try to add some challenge and fun. And I'm gonna tell you what, I think I found the tool to get the job done with the new M40A3 from ASG. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the M40A3 McMillan, it is the US Marine Corps designated sniper rifle. This is what you see all the modern troops out there downrange using to take out the bad guys from range. Now picking this thing up, the first thing I noticed was I was like, God, this thing is actually pretty heavy. And I was a little concerned until I shouldered it and I realized all the weight is toward the back of the rifle and it makes it really easy to maneuver. In fact, I couldn't imagine this thing being any lighter and fun to use. I really like the way they handled the weight distribution and putting it all on the rear makes it so easy to shoulder and get those shots off and not feel fatigued over time. The styling itself is this olive drab body, some great textured panels and black accents, especially here like on the cheek rest and rear butt pads. And they've got some great features too. For example, the butt pad itself is removable. You can actually take out these spacers in here and set it for the length of pull that you want. So if you want one, two, or all of these, you can leave them in or take them out to make it comfortable for you as a player. And the cheek rest is fully adjustable. It's actually a metal cheek rest that actually has a rubberized coating on the outside. So it's not so cold when it hits your cheek and gives you a little bit of grip. And with these two little thumb screws right here, you can move it up and down and there's even marks to set the level that you're looking for depending on the height of your scope and the way you like to have your cheek meld with the rifle stock. So moving up to the grip, the grip is actually more vertical than most rifles. Most of them have like a, a pretty solid angle to them. This one is almost 90 degrees up and down and it's really fat. And at first you think it's gonna be uncomfortable or awkward, but once you get your hand on the rifle and you slide it down again, just like that weight thing, you realize what went into this to give you those proper ergonomics to get the shots off. In front of the grip, you get the usual safe and fire switch, push it forward for fire, pull it back for safe, and of course the bolt itself. And the bolt is really not that hard to pull back. It's actually pretty light. The spring pull isn't that bad, especially for the FPS you get out of the box, but we're gonna get to that part when we get to the chrono test a little later on in our video. So moving down the top of the rifle, you get a great Picatinny rail here that gives you plenty of room to put whatever optic you want on, a four by scope, an eight by scope, or even a larger scope to get those really long shots if you decide to go the upgrade route on this gun. And the trademarks and the markings here, the US markings down the side look fantastic. The way they've etched them into the metal barrel is a really great touch. At the end of the barrel, you do have a plastic cap, but from what I understand, you can use thread adapters on this and attach a suppressor if you wanna go for that super USMC suppressed sniper look that you see all the photos of the M40A3 all over the web. And coming back around the bottom of the stock, you have a bipod attach point here on the bottom and more swivel sling attachments than you know what to do with. In fact, you have one on either side here in the front, you have one on the bottom in the front, and when you go to the back of the gun, you have one on either side in the back and one on the bottom as well, giving you six spots to put a swivel sling attachment so you're not gonna have any concerns getting a sling set up that works for you. And finally, on the bottom itself is the hop-up adjustment. It's right here at the bottom, so there's no crazy pull the bolt back and have to do anything like that to get the hop-up adjust correctly. The only concern I had with the placement of this is it's kind of right where your hand naturally falls, which can be a good thing so you can dial in your shots, but you gotta be mindful not to bump it. But they thought of that and they made it so it clicks into place so you can make those fine-tuned adjustments and know with a click. So last but not least externally is the magazine itself, and it's behind this little door here on the bottom in front of your trigger guard. There's a small recess button. You press that button and the door swings down and then the magazine can be pulled back and dropped out. It's just kind of held in place basically by just a couple grooves and you have this tiny little magazine. It's probably one of the smallest sniper rifle magazines out there and it feeds from the back toward the front and holds 20 rounds. The good thing about the size is these things are so small you can carry as many as you can pretty much hold on you and never run out of rounds and getting them changed isn't bad. It's got a grooves. You just kind of put it in there, you slide it forward. It doesn't really have to lock into place and you shut the door. It's super easy to get this thing back up and running when you run out of ammo. 
So taking this thing to the chrono, we saw a pretty healthy number. We were seeing around almost 430 FPS from this gun out of the box, which is actually pretty darn good for a sniper rifle. But if your field allows or your Milsim event allows, you can turn this thing up. And the best part is it's VSR 10 compatible with almost every part under the hood. And on that note, I'm going to be doing a build with this gun, taking a bunch of the VSR 10 parts I have and turning this thing into a sniper beast. So stay tuned for that video coming up here probably in the next month when I get to tear it all apart and show you what really goes on under the hood of the M40A3. So bottom line, if you're looking for a top tier sniper rifle, that's a great platform to build off of. It's fully upgradable, but still has a pretty darn good kick out of the box. Take a look at the M40A3 McMillan by ASG. You can pick it up anywhere ASG products are sold for right around $299 US. So guys, I want to know how many of you out there bought a sniper rifle as your first or your second airsoft gun? I want to know in the comments down there below because I'm going to tell you what, I did too. You get a pistol, then you get a sniper rifle, and then you kind of go into the AEG world. I'm really excited about this because I'm wanting to get back in the sniper game, but let me know what you guys think of even being a sniper in airsoft, if it's even worth it down there in the comments. All right, guys, that's it for this episode of The Gear Guide. I'll be back in the next episode where I get up on a tower at my local field and in one shot, get six kills by curving a bullet.